People are dead and more than 28,000 infected with coronavirus around the world. That's if the Chinese are telling the truth. Trucks passes through the northern Italian city of Bergamo. Crematorium so overwhelmed that the military is transporting the dead. Una, due, tre. And there are many, many dead. We have the worst kind of breaking news. Washington Post reporting that for the first time, coronavirus deaths in this country surpassed 100 in one day. And a 500 total. Claire McCaskill, we're reaching horrific kinds of milestones in this country. Cough, runny nose, don't feel very well. With coronavirus, since it's a respiratory virus, it tends to settle in the lungs and people start getting shortness of breath. That's the telltale sign, sign along with exposure in Wuhan, China, or exposure to somebody who's been in Wuhan, China. What's up, fam? Uh, this is still the day that the Lord has made, and we're here to rejoice and be glad in it. I want you to know that I love you, and I want you to know there's nothing you can do about it. I want you to know that we live in a topsy-turvy world. Topsy-turvy, everything is crazy. Uh, so many things are happening, so many questions, so much anxiety, pressure, and stress, and frustration. But through it all, I want you to be encouraged and know that God is still in control. I want you to be encouraged and know that none of this is intimidating to God, uh, that God is, uh, is, is, is intimately acquainted with our thoughts. God knows our thoughts and our feelings from afar off. And we serve a God who still will take care of us. And I want you to believe that and stand resolute in that reality that God will take care of us, that God will see us through. I believe that tests provide for us an opportunity to have updated testimonies. And I believe that when we come through this pandemic, our lives are going to be better. You know, I've been pastoring for 30 years this year, and I've been blessed to serve God's people and honored to serve God's people. I've been to church all my life. I've seen many changes and many transitions, but I can honestly say I've never seen anything that really rocked the world as this pandemic has rocked the world. I remember how September 11th left us feeling and the, the recession, and the stock market crash of of 2008, that depression. I even remember uh, Hurricane Katrina, how debilitating and devastating that was for the Gulf Coast. But without any reservations, I don't think any of those things are remotely close to what we're feeling right now. I mean, a global disruption, and it's affecting every area, every segment of society, and we're having to figure things out. I've been talking to pastors all over the world, and we're trying to figure out how do we serve God's people during this time of tragedy and pandemic. Personally, in my local congregation, the House of Hope Atlanta, I love you guys, those who are watching, we've been affected by this. We have 13 members who've been uh, diagnosed with COVID-19. Uh, two of them we had on the show recently, uh, Christian Perry and Shannon Watson, Christian, 20-year-old young man who contracted it and was able to come out of it. He's off of quarantine now. Shannon celebrated her 50th birthday and went to Jamaica and got back from Jamaica. And one week later, after celebrating her life, she went to fighting for her life, was in a medically induced coma and was in ICU for, uh, for over um, uh, a week and spent almost 10 days in ICU. And she's home, she's resting, trying to get things back to normal. So it's been a whole lot. Uh, we've had another 13, 14 members, uh, three members rather, tw 12 members who've been affected by it another three members who've had death in their family. And it's been challenging for them because some of them won't be able to make it back home uh, to, to even celebrate and pay their last respects to their parent. So it's a very tough time, a very difficult time. We've had about 12 or 13 bishops to pass away uh, through this pandemic in the last two weeks. And so it's just a very debilitating time. And we've got to utilize faith and common sense to get through it. As a pastor, I want to help us be equipped and today we're touched and we're moved because there's a young man I'm going to interview today who has not contracted COVID-19, but has had a parent to recently pass from it and is trying to navigate those realities. And I love him so much. He's not just a, a Christian brother, not just a, a member of the House of Hope. And he's been one of my musicians for the past 10 years and has literally traveled the, the nation with me. But 
But more importantly, he's a brother, a brother beloved. He's a, he's a brother that I consider my friend. And he's just had to, he's walking through this process now. And I want to welcome him to our uh, show today. This I speak of none other than Justin the Bishop Gilbert. What's up, my brother? Hey, sir, how you doing? I'm great. Thank Good you. to see you, man. I'm so, so proud of you. You raised in the church and honed your talents there in the church, grew up here and uh, you know, went to church, thankful new beginnings and start playing at a young age. And God has blessed you to come from playing in the church, traveling the world with some of the most renowned artists, Justin Timberlake, uh, Mariah Carey, Jay-Z. Uh, you've been on tour with Tyler Perry and so many others. That I'd be remiss if I tried to call the role, but man, you've been able to do all that and still stay uh, connected with your local church and still use your talents for God. And I appreciate you for that. Absolutely, sir. Bless you. Yeah, I, I want to talk with you today, and uh, I appreciate you for consenting to do this. Um, it's tough. Uh, you raising the church, your father raising the church, raising the church, and got your start in the church, and you just got news that your father, uh, overseer Billy Joe Gilbert, who's a great leader here within our city and also one of the leaders in the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship, recently passed away, and we just want to send our condolences to you. And I just think you can... Sometimes sharing your story can help others, but how are you coping? Um, honestly, it's, it is, uh, it has not been easy. Um, however, I'm, I'm staying, um, I'm just been, I'm staying very present and, um, honestly taking it one hour at a time because, you know, um, it's a, it's a difficult thing like the, the loss and, um, you know, those feelings of loss and those emotions uh, associated with grief are only exacerbated by uh, that inability to have like certain uh, elements of closure that we may be accustomed to normally visiting someone in the hospital, but you can't do that when they're quarantined. So, you know what I'm saying? It, it leaves uh, some, some very sore spots uh, in one part, you know, kind of dealing with death uh, along with the complications from uh, this pandemic. Yeah, you know, I, you know, we talk and you've been there for me and I never forget it. You know, you've been consistent, you know, in my life. And when I went through all these things a couple of years ago with my with deaths of my mom and my sister and Danny and my godmother, you were there for me and helped play me through and travel the country with me. And this thing was just so shocking because I just seen your dad a few weeks ago. Uh, we were together at Bishop Hall's uh, home going. I saw him, we exchanged pleasantries, and that was March the 9th. And so when I got the news that he had expired and made his transition, I was shocked because he looked perfectly fine on March the 9th. I mean, and I know we, we talked about it, you said it happened so quickly. You want to kind of talk about that for a moment? How, I mean, how did this all transpire? Sure. Um, my father, in addition to his uh, his ministerial duties and his pastorate, he was also a trained, um, uh, what they call a respiratory therapist. So he's been doing that for a number of years and uh, he's semi-retired. So, you know, he would work shifts occasionally because he was still, you know, even at 78 years old, he was still pretty spry. And uh, when he, you know, keep himself busy. So he was working some shifts at uh, the hospital. And, um, you know, being that he's working in the respiratory unit, he was coming directly into contact with these people with this virus. And, uh, you know, just availing himself and, and doing his job uh, to the best of his ability to help them, he ended up contracting it. And, um, I, you know, let's see. He passed away on April 1st, so um, a week before his passing was when he went into the hospital, actually. He was probably um, formally diagnosed the day before, so like that Tuesday prior to he had, he had you know, they said, yes, you do have COVID-19 virus. He then was in the hospital, um, you know, just to fast forward through that, one day it's like, um, I, I actually spoke with him um, the week before. So I, I spoke with him on that Thursday. So he was already in the hospital, um, not doing well. 
I could hear it in his voice, but he was, you know, he was he was remaining positive and doing his best to work with it. Um, I would say by um, by the weekend, doctors um, had put him on a ventilator, and uh, at that point, they wanted him. Uh, they had him on a, a steady flow of sedatives. So he was resting, um, you know, during the whole time at this point because the doctors didn't want that that uh, that level of of work to be going on on his body. It was already um, a, a tremendous uh, this this disease was was taking taking effect, taking hold. Uh, so after after the weekend, um, things just sort of progressed, and uh, you know, with the with the disease, what was happening or what is happening a lot is there's this mucus buildup that's happening on people's lungs and things. So the doctors thought it would be um, helpful to turn him a certain way. Um, and, you know, ultimately what ended up happening, they explained the risks involved and said this, you know, sometimes this can t cause a patient's heart to stop and his heart did stop and they were unable to revive him. And this happens pretty regularly like this is one of the ways that uh that a lot of people are losing their battle with the coronavirus so um it it was yeah it was it was a shock um and it, it was a it was a it was a crazy thing i mean and that just makes the story that much more impactful knowing your dad and his magnetic personality and that and that amazing smile uh that he has and of course bequeathed to you you know, to, to, to now, that's the story is even more sobering now to know that here's a guy who's semi-retired, who's in ministry, uh, who doesn't have to really be doing this, but a sense of call and a sense of wanting to help somebody else. You know, even though you're in that age where you're kind of susceptible to it, but you still want to go and, and serve. You know, it's so sacrificial and it's so uh, just a picture of, of selflessness, you know, when most of us run from those situations when we think our lives will be in danger, but for him to, to be that sacrificial and, and go toward danger because he wants to help somebody else. It just, it just really personifies his life and really helps me to understand in a lot of ways why you all, how you are, because in many ways you, you chip off the old block, man. How, how do you feel about that? You know, about him, you know, willing to make that kind of sacrifice uh, just to help, to help other people. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, he was, he was, uh, that was his, that was his MO consistently. Um, it, it doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, I think anyone who met him, uh, automatically, you know, they, they found him to be a fast friend and just someone that, uh, was easy to just be around someone that wanted to do the work. He was a dutiful, uh, pastor as well as just a, a everyday guy when, when the clergy collars come off, like, you know, if there was a need and he could uh, be helpful, he was going to jump to it. So um, it, it, in some ways, it's, um, it's, it's an interesting position because, you know, it, it, it's a pleasant memory. And then, you know, there's the selfish, uh, the, my own, my own personal one, I, I would have liked for him to have um, chosen a course that would have been, you know, more beneficial for him but that wasn't the type of person he was so you know i'm i'm you know it gives me comfort i you know so it's a it's a thing yeah so it's a it's a and i actually said it, it's kind of bittersweet because it's such an honorable thing now in terms of his wife and uh the congregation you know how how they how's everybody navigating through this and honestly the best they can um you know it's a tremendous uh, loss losing a pastor for these people and um you know we've we we shared him with with the church and the ministry and they really um they supported him and and you know with their their time their talents as well as their resources so you know they they were invested um uh, easily you know that to say i can put it that way they were invested in him and uh, they really love their pastor and they love his wife they love the first family so um they've been supportive to us but they're they're hurting as well um you know his wife um she is uh she is currently she um she's currently 
quarantined um, and kind of dealing with um, those effects of the virus as well and just being in that close proximity and uh, you know so we're definitely keeping her lifted it's a um, it's a it's a it's a traumatic thing so now you, you got to celebrate his life uh, a couple of days and it, with all the parameters you know as you said earlier not being able to even not just be with them in those moments to say goodbyes but but one of the things that helps sometimes when you're grieving is be able to have the support of family and friends that come over and the hugs and the fellowship you know sometimes that people don't realize it but that it, when you have support like that it's just sometimes people being there their presence you know uh you know people bringing food and bringing cards but just being there how do you how you navigate in that because you just can't be open to everybody during this this time and of course i'm sure you have friends and small groups but how does that feel in terms of trying to navigate through this without with those restrictions and being concerned about not contracting it how, how, with social distancing how are you navigating through that um certainly that is certainly a concern uh you know with the with the visitations and such um we've been very fortunate the people that have um drop by or, or given expressions or, or brought us a meal they've been very um they've been very respectful and um they've been personally one to adhere to the COVID advisories themselves so we've been practicing the social distancing even in the midst of of that giving so you know you know i i would i would love to hug them but we you know we elbow bumping and um you know sitting stuff outside the door and and you know what i'm saying it's just kind of maintaining that distance and letting people know that you're great uh without endangering you know them or or yourselves you know what i'm saying it's a it's a very tricky thing but the people that um the people that truly love him and love our family you know they've been very understanding and we we're very appreciative let me ask you this question so in terms of how how do you how do you how have you prepared for the actual home growing ceremony? I know it's gonna probably so I've looked at some things, there's gonna be some virtual aspects to it, but what is your expectation? What would you like to see happen when you go and to have this final service to honor him, the funeral services? What what is your expectation? What would you like to happen and how can we assist you? Um I would like for that time to be um joyous and I'd like for uh his essence to to permeate through the whole thing. My, my father was a guy that loved a good laugh. He liked a good joke um, and he liked harmony. He liked peace. He liked um, he liked to be in joyful situations and he brought a bit of joy with him everywhere he went. So, um, you know, with the, uh, the, the things that the funeral home has put in place as far as the social distancing parameters, there can only be 10 people um, inside the visitation room at once. And we're having to do, um, we're doing a review service. So it's not your typical wake, but it's where people can come and pay their respects uh, quickly and then just kind of keep moving and vacate the premises since we're doing this 10 people at a time. So um, I just think everyone um, can bring that, bring some love, bring their love for, for Overseer Gilbert and, and, uh, and a can-do attitude and uh, help us move it along um, while, while paying their last respects, but, but with, with love and understanding. You know, music, you, you've been musical your whole life, and we know that music has charms to soothe the savage beast, and it's your profession, it's you, you've traveled the world through it. You know, I'm curious as to how you've been blessed and gifted and anointed to inspire so many others, you know, whether it be the Super Bowl arena with Justin Timberlake, or whether it's, you know, the Lost Hope Baptist Church in, in Villarica, Georgia. You know, you, you've used music as a tool to encourage and inspire so many others. I'm, I'm curious as to how has music benefited you during this season? I mean, uh, have, have you been musical? What, what role? What, have, what, what is, have you played yourself? Have you listened to it? I'm just curious as to how that works for you. You've given that medicine to others, but I'm just curious as to its effect on you during this time. Oh, we, listen, Pastor, we know music uh, soothes the soul. I, it's so therapeutic. I definitely take advantage of 
the music that's inside me and I find solace in playing um, um, things that I know he enjoyed singing or um, songs that just minister to me. Um, I find peace there and um, it's, it's, it's cathartic. You know, I can, I can express myself on the instrument and I've even, um, I think just coming into, I've begun to come into a different awareness of my own gift and the fact that it, it blesses so many other people, but you know, I've been guilty in the past of not using it to bless myself and bless my home, bless my atmosphere. So um, even in this season, that there's that's the newness that that comes with this uh, transition. My father's transition. I've been transitioning and even getting more in tune with myself and using the gift to comfort myself and my family. And um, you know, speaking of music, it's a it's a funny thing. Like I did a song on my uh, my my latest release, um, Quest to Find It, entitled "What's in a Name," and I was blessed to have my father, my mother, and my son on the song with me. And um, playing the song, um, it brings me peace. And, uh, you know, in this season, I, you know, with so much going on around us, it's important to know where we can find peace and go there. And I've been, you know, just taking advantage of it. God gave me the idea long before this moment arrived, but, you know, it's a it's a reminder of the importance um, of of a name. It's about relationship. It's about legacy, um, you know. And uh, it the music is part certainly part of his legacy too, um, because he beget me and 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 I'm here. So it's 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 powerful. Music has certainly uh, been a place where I find rest in this season. You know, it's, it's funny to hear you talk about your family and your roots and your son, because I was thinking about that, you know, uh, as I've seen you travel the world doing your thing, and as we've traveled so many places and, and enjoyed meals and conversations on planes and at dinner, you know, and lunch, you know, the conversations we've had about your son. And what I love is the way the admiration and the adulation that you speak of in terms of your father. And when I look at your eyes and your son's eyes, when you guys look at each other and spend time with each other, you know, it's just a beautiful thing because you're carrying on that legacy with Overseer Gilbert, you know, the legacy left for you to see you instilling that. And I've seen you do it. I've seen you have those conversations and be concerned about, you know, your, your son's academics and him being holistic. Uh, how, how has that been during this season in terms of you and him? You know, do you find yourself reaching out closer or what has that been like you grieving, but also being to him what your father uh, has been for you your entire life? And that's a very interesting question. It's, um, it's, it's very interesting because, you know, as he's entering into the preteen phase and, um, you know, all of the, the social uh, things that come with this age, it's kind of like he's having to experience it, uh, this grief and this loss right along with me, but I'm also attempting to use it as a teaching, uh, teachable moment to show him how to love on people that he holds dear if ever they experience a loss like he's experiencing. So um, one of the things that I found to be very helpful is just transparency and very, very open communication. So um, from the moment my father began having issues with the illness, I'm updating my son, you know, he's right here with me. Hey, your granddad's doing something that's going on. This is happening all the way up until, um, you know, his transition. And, you know, what that does is that that made it so that he was in the loop. Um, he wasn't just blindsided with this loss out of nowhere because, you know, we're keeping him in kid phase and letting them play all day and, you know, keeping them out of the loop. No, this is a real thing. So, um, it's been it's been a journey, but uh, it's been a blessing. It's been tough. It was tough for him. He took it um, pretty hard, as, as you can imagine. They were very close, and uh, but but he's he's been he's been taking it in stride, and uh, um, you know he's been checking on me. You know, just 
he's he's understanding that you got to reach out to people and have uh, even in the social media age you still that that one-on-one -on -one contact and somebody actually taking the time does matter and i'm sure he's felt the comfort of that from me and he's giving it to me so uh you know i can only hope um we, he continues you know, to grow I just, from here I, I just i just man you know you know how i feel about you and we've always shared that you know uh and I, the world knows, everybody who knows me know I love Jeff, Justin, you know, and and my heart goes out to you. And I just wish we could be there, and, you know, holistic with the church and just shower you guys the way we normally would do it in times like these. And uh, but I, I just I just want you to know we love you. We're praying for you. What what kind of um, what would you say to people who are facing what you're facing now in terms of the hospitalization? And and even we I, I, I hate to say this and help, hate to sound pessimistic, but more people in our church are going to, have to face this and they're going to be more deaths they're, they're, they're expecting the next couple of weeks so we we can't bear heads in the sands but uh, you know this is the first conversation we've had like this with our broadcast what would you say to people who have loved ones and relatives that are hospitalized and those who are going to face death you know what would you say to them you know one, one last word of encouragement and wisdom as, as you're coping i know you don't have all the answers but You've been coping with it thus far, but what would you say to people watching? And that literally tens of thousands of people are going to see this. What would you say? To yeah. Them? Well, it's a uh, it's my answer to that is it's uh, it's probably going to display a bit of my duality. Um, I I would encourage people to um, remain steadfast and strong in their faith and realize that um, even though this sickness and 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 all of these these things are surprised to us god is not surprised or intimidated um by our predicaments um that that is that is spiritual me I, i'm dealing with the loss I, I would give people um the advice that, that a good friend gave me listen if you got to cry cuss get it up out of you um it is it is difficult um, but the best way, uh, in my opinion, to deal with things is to be present, um, feel everything and and uh, process those things like get it out of you, because if it stays in, it, it's going to be uh, implosive or explosive. And either one of those isn't good. So it's best to deal with things, be very present, love on the people that you're with um, to anyone hearing this uh one of the things that I found um, peace in and solace in this difficult time is the fact that um, I have no regrets. So if you still have your parents, you know, people hear this all the time. If you still have your parents, love them while you got them, do your best for them because when they're gone and nothing you could do, and it's just, it's just a bunch of memories and you don't want to have missteps or, uh, you know, situations that you feel you've done better so uh, i say love on your folks while you got them um, spread love be present feel everything process that thing trust god and know he'll never put more on us than we can bear you talk about the song that you and your mom and your and your dad and your, and your son did what what album is that i want to make sure we listen to that i want to i want to check that one out Yes, sir. Um, it's on my Questophonic EP. I released that uh, last August, and uh, it's a it's a powerful song. The song is called "What's in the Name," and uh, the chorus it, it asks the question, "What's in the name?" It's it's the first gift we get at birth. Um, secondly, it it foretells our purpose and worth. Our names are prophetic. Um, thirdly, our our names tell our family history. And fourthly, they represent our legacy. They're gonna they're gonna be here after we are. People are gonna still know those names. So uh, I encourage any, everybody. You know, if you got a name, then you should have it. You know what I'm saying? Because I think it it speaks to everyone, and it's a feel good thing. Uh, man, like it just it's been blessing me in this season, and you know, I, I'm thankful. I mean, that just this just shows you how good God is, man. For you to uh, have had that vision that you had a long time and see it manifest less than a year ago and god knew that you were going to need it and it's going to bless you and inevitably it's going to bless a lot of people and i can't wait to get it and what's in the name we're going to make sure we push that and i'm going to make sure i go get it right now because i don't have that one 
I don't have that project. I got most everything else, Christmas and everything else, but uh, I'm going to make sure I get it, man. We love you, brother, and uh, I just want you to know I'm praying for you, and we speak God's blessings over your life. And uh, as you get through this difficult time, I just pray as you've been there for so many others, you know, down through the years with your music, man, you've, uh, when people have come, have come to worship, they've been down and broken and suicidal and grieved and so many things, man, but just your spirit and your professionalism and your music and you let God use you has just lifted people from the doldrums. And, and it's, you know, some people, so many people see it just as a gig or, the job or the location, I go play, I get a check, but you've always seen it as ministry, and uh, and you've ministered to people all over the world. You put smiles on people's faces all over the world. You brought joy and excitement, you know, whether it was gospel, whether it was jazz, whether it was Christmas, whether it was R&B or pop, you know, you, you, your music has personified your life, and you just inspired and encouraged so many others, and I just pray, man, that, that God will restore for you and through you and your family and, and at this time, the blessing that you've given to so many people, even in my life, the Bible says you give a prophet a glass of water, you reap a prophet's reward. My brother, you've given me a whole lot more than a glass of water. You renewed me through your music. Uh, you've encouraged me. You've helped me preach the gospel when I was broken and didn't have strength. And I just pray God reciprocates that to you, man, a hundred, a thousand fold. And I just speak God's blessing on you. We're going to be there with you, walk you through this. And when, when, they, when it's all over, we're still going to be here and make sure that that justice is going to be okay. So I love you and I appreciate you, man. Love you, sir. Thank you so much.